Hi everyone, it's Laura from So Very Easy. And today it is July 30th and we are going to make colored t-shirts. Now this is a great project to use for kids or for any t-shirt that you want to get one picture to another picture. So this is a way of transferring pictures onto fabric. And it's very easy to do. You can transfer it onto a t-shirt. You can even transfer it onto pillowcases, anything that has a fabric content. I like to use some kind of a cotton or a t-shirt. Works really great. It's also good for like little bags that the kids want to carry. Now, I had a very special boy come over and help me the other day. And this is the shirt that he did. So it's very easy and Look how cute that is. He did a great job. So what we're going to need are a couple of things. The first thing we're going to need is the picture that we're going to transfer. Now, this was a picture that I was able just to copy online. But you can get a picture that's going to come from a coloring book or anything that you want to transfer. The younger the child, you're just going to want to have something a little bit easier so that they can color it. Then as they get older, or if it's something you want to do, you can go as detailed as you're going to want to do. Of course, we're going to need the item to transfer. And in this case, I'm going to use the t-shirt. The other thing which is going to be really, really handy is a piece of cardboard. And that cardboard is going to go in between the t-shirt. So you're only going to transfer on one side. And it's going to help it so it stays a little bit tighter and it's going to be easier to color. We're also going to need the markers to transfer the picture. I'm going to be using markers from Sulky and these are permanent transferable markers. This particular one comes in a set of four different colors and I'm going to use two today. I'm going to use the black and the brown. The other thing is the coloring that you're going to want to do. So you can get any type of a permanent marker that is safe for fabric. And I have a great set here. And what I like about it is one end is a thicker marker and the other end is a thinner marker. And you can get them in all sorts of different colors, which is really a lot of fun. A couple of clips and that helps that cardboard stay on. And I like to use some basting spray. That basting spray is just going to make it easier for whoever it is coloring the picture so that that fabric doesn't shift because fabric is not paper. It wants to move and it makes it a little bit harder to color. Now, if you don't have the spray, you can use freezer paper. Now, freezer paper is not wax paper, but it does have a wax surface on it. So you have paper on one side wax on the other and you're able to take that and iron that wax side onto the t-shirt underneath and it'll help prevent it from slipping but i'm going to use the spray adhesive i just find it a whole lot easier to do and we're going to need an iron i give mine a shake so i make sure that it stays on so the first thing we're going to do is work with the pitcher and I do like to have very simple designs, especially if it's for kids, because it's just easier for them to do. Now, my grandson's only two, so he's not going to be able to really color in the lines. So it's okay. I'm just going to want a nice big picture because I know he's going to love doing this picture with the dump truck and the dirt. So the first thing we need to do is take that picture and transfer it onto the item and to do that we're going to use these markers so it is a tube of glue and we just need to give it a good shake and then at the end you'll see like a little magic marker tip can you see that little magic marker tip there and what you want the, to do is have the ink that is in that tube flow down and fill that end of that tip. So the first thing you need to do is give it a shake and then just push down. Let me show you, you can push that. So you see that little tip there? You're just gonna push it down, hold on, all the way. And what happens is that ink is coming from that tube 
into that area and you'll be able to see when it starts to come out you might have to do that every couple of minutes as you're drawing a picture but it's going to be fine I have a lot of people joining me today and I just want to say thank you for everybody who does join me I have hi from Glenda and Susie Shirley in the UK hi Shirley Brandy in Texas Kathy Hilma in BC uh, Marlene in Bermuda Gail and hello from London hi London so welcome everybody I really enjoy doing these um, I enjoy your comments I can't unless I catch that comment right away as you're commenting on the screen I might not see them afterwards so if there's something that you need to say then be sure to go to the video after it's loaded on YouTube and then I'm going to be able to read the comments I read every single comment you guys send me I just love them they are great I don't often I used to answer every single one but there's so many now I'm sorry I can't keep up answering them all so I answer all the ones that have a question but I do want you to know I read every single one and they really mean a lot to me that you've taken time to comment so thank you very much so let's get going on this picture so I'm going to push that ink so that it comes into the bottom and all I'm going to do is trace the picture now this picture is going to be ironed in this direction so the picture is going to be reverse if it's in this case a dump truck it's going to be fine but if you're going to do words what you're going to have to do is have the picture backwards so that when you iron it on it's going to be in the right direction but other than that it's going to be fine so I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to outline all of the lines in the drawing now I've already ironed the lines once just so that it would be a little bit easier for me to do with you but have that ink go nice and slow so you get a good ink line because you want falls into here to come through to the marker onto that page because then we're going to transfer it so if you take your time and really get a good ink you know a little good line of ink it's nice because then the line is going to be a little darker and I'm not going to be really really fussy it depends on what you want to do if it's something that you want a lot of detail well then you can be a little bit more fussy but if it's for kids they're going to be able to trace it themselves and this is what Jacob did he traced his own picture and then put it on and then after he colored it he outlined it again in a black marker so that the the picture showed up a little bit more so it didn't come out really dark when he did it the first time but it's okay you're gonna be able to see it anyways and just keep tracing all of these edges you can even add lines if you want or you don't have to do them all just do whatever you want and this is the fun part because you can do any picture you know that you're going to have it on um, something that you can put an iron to so I wouldn't trace a photograph because you're not going to be able to with the heat of the iron this is going to have a lot of heat from the iron so it has to be iron safe so I can think of a lot of different projects this would make a great uh, birthday party if you're going to have some kids over I think it would be great if you're having some school team spirit thing and you need to have a shirt so that everybody has the same shirt this would be a good way to do it and we can just keep doing this and because I know it's going to be colored over top I'm not going to worry a lot if you find the ink is not coming out you can just push it down for a moment and let that ink flow back to the tip but I find that you're writing on paper you're already pushing hard enough but just in case then you know it's there and around we go and I'm not going to be too fussy on the pictures let's do a little mark here 
And with the brown, because I have a dump truck that is dumping dirt, I'm just going to put a little brown on it because I know he's not going to be coloring exactly in those lines. So at least you'll know what the picture is. And I'm just going to outline it. And you could actually color the picture if you wanted to, but it doesn't turn out really, really dark, which is nice because you want your artwork to show, not necessarily that printing. It kind of makes it look like you've cheated and you've got a nice picture. Oops, there we go. And I just want to have that picture transfer. That should be enough for now. So the next thing is going to be transferring it onto the t-shirt. Now the ink I have not found has transferred to the back side, so you won't have to worry about it right at the very beginning. But I have found that if you iron the shirt and heat it up first, it does help. Let's see if my iron stayed on. Yes, it did. So the first thing I like to do is I want to make hot that surface that I'm going to put that transfer on. And this is one reason why you need something that's going to be able to have that iron as some heat. And just make that surface warm. Now I'm going to take the picture and I'm going to make sure I have it in the right direction, even though it is upside down. And I'm going to put it on. Can you, someone has asked, can you put a list of what you use for us? Yes. When the video is done, it's going to be on the YouTube channel. So you're going to be able to view it anytime you want. In the description, I have a list of the things that I'm going to use. So you're going to be able to use it. Now, because I'm ironing and there's nothing on the paper, I'm not worried about anything transferring onto my iron. If you would have any marks on your paper, just put down a little pressing sheet of some sort so you don't have anything transferred onto that iron. And just take a little bit and iron that with the highest heat that you're going to be able to have. You don't need steam because the steam's not going to work through the paper. You just want the heat. It's a heat source. So I'm just going to do that and transfer it. This is such a fun project to make. Now, if you have children that are very small and won't be able to do this portion of it, this is something you're going to be able to prepare in advance so they can just sit down and do the coloring part. So Jacob was able to trace those pictures on his own the other day, so I wasn't able, I didn't have to do that part. I just had to work the heat of the iron because I didn't want him to get burnt. Once it is transferred, before you move it, you can peek underneath and see. Let me see if I can show you. Let's see, hold on. You can see if that transfer is coming out. This iron is a very simple iron. It's one that I travel with. It's a shark iron. Um, and I'm going to be needing a new one soon because it's it's dying on me. I've used it so much. So you can peel and take a peek underneath to see if that picture has transferred enough. And I like to just let it cool down a bit. Let me cool it down if I can. Just so that that ink sort of stays a little bit more permanent. And I also don't burn my fingers that way. So I'm using a dry iron. You don't need steam. The steam um, is only going to be hitting the paper and make the paper wet. You don't need that. All you're needing is that heat source, not the steam. So now I can just peel that back. And there's my picture. Isn't that great? That's so cute. So it's just the outlines, and you can see that it did not go through the back of the shirt at all. So that works out really great. Now I'm going to just take that and put a piece of cardboard in between the shirt. So I'm not having to be able to color on both sides. I only want to color on the one. You can get any piece of cardboard that is going to 
that is going to work. Can I use a heat? Yes, you could use a heat press. The only thing you're going to want to keep in mind is some heat presses do have steam holes. Let me explain that. So each one of these holes, you're not going to get that in the, um, it's not going to transfer the ink in that hole area because the heat is not sitting on top of it. So what you want to do is you're going to want to press it and then may lose, move it a little bit and press it again. And that's why when you press with the iron, it's good if you move it a little bit back and forth so that you cover all of the surfaces and that you don't get any of those little hole marks. Even if you do, it's fine because you're going to be coloring it anyways. So I've just put that cardboard in there. Um, and that way it's going to be a firmer surface for them to color on. But because it is a t-shirt, if they're coloring, that fabric is going to move. And it's very hard to color when something is moving because it's not paper. And this is where you can take this uh, wax or this freezer paper where it's got the paper on one side and the wax on the other. You could take that and put that underneath. And this is the wax side up and put that right underneath and just iron. I'll do that really quick and I'll show you how that's going to do. You can just iron that right on top, just like this. That's it. And just do it for a couple of seconds and that paper is going to stick right onto that fabric. Then it can be peeled off afterwards. So that is one option. I like to use um, a spray, a spray basting glue. It's temporary. It washes off and it makes it great. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to just lift up that shirt so that I have that little cavity in there and I'm going to spray that cardboard. And by just doing that, when I lay that picture down, that picture does not move. It's stuck right onto the cardboard and it's only temporary, so it's fine. Now you can see that that picture is not moving at all, so it's nice and tight on. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this t-shirt and pull all of the extra fabric out of the way. It just gives them an easier surface to color on and it's just less in their way. So I'm going to just take it from the back and just fold over all of the edges. And I use these little clips. And you can use any type of clip at all. And I'm just going to clip those on. Whoops. That one worked really well. And I'm just going to clip the shirts, the shirt onto the cardboard. And afterwards, I'm able to take those little clips and fold them down. I can straighten that up. And I'll do the same thing to the top of the shirt. Um, I wouldn't put the freezer paper on. I, I have a question. Uh, can you iron the freezer paper on before doing the transfer? You could, but you're holding the iron on so long, you really don't need that extra heat on that um, that paper. You can give it a try, though. I would give a test if you want. Um, it would it would just stick stick on because it's a wax, and you still can peel that off. So you see what I'm saying? Just by putting these clips on, it's to keep it tighter as they're coloring it. And it's not going to hurt. It really won't even get in their way. And fold those edges down. And one more. I have a bunch of more hellos. I have Nisprin in India. Hello. Hello, Kathy and Moran in Oregon. Tina in Jamaica. Marcy, Teresa in Kentucky, Judy in Orlando, first time watcher. Hello, welcome. Uh, Buffy in Dubai, Bobby in Wisconsin, Babel in Germany, Kelly in New Brunswick, Gay in Nebraska, Angela in Pennsylvania, and Glenda in the Netherlands. This is so much fun. We have people from all over the world being able to join us today, and that's what I think these are so much fun fun to do. 
back to the t-shirt. So here we go. I have it all clipped on. And now we're going to be able to color this. So at this stage, if you have someone that's not able to do those stages beforehand, they'll be able to go from here. And it's not going to be any extra work. It keeps them away from the iron. And if they can't trace, if they're not old enough to trace, then you're going to be able to trace for them. In this case, he was able to trace the picture himself. So he was able to do the entire step except for the ironing because I didn't want him near yeah, the iron. I didn't want him to burn himself. Now we're going to be able to color them. And be sure to use markers that are safe for fabric. There's some markers out there that out, over time, we don't know how well they're going to last on the fabric because they're not designed for fabric. So we want them, excuse me, we want them permanent. And that way we're going to, they're going to be able to use the shirts all the time and they're going to be able to enjoy them more. So now I have all of the markers and I'm going to be able to just have them color them. Let me see if I can find a brown and I can start his dirt for him. And I know he's going to want to color it. He's coloring already and he's already drawn his first picture of his mother, which is my daughter. So there we go. And these, these markers are great because I have a thick side. Do you see that? It's a nice thick side on one and a nice thin pointy one on the other one. They're great little markers. Let me show you the package so you can see what it looks like. I do like them too, so let's see what they are. I think, yeah, so, and you can get, I think there's two different, I got two different packages, so I know there's at least two different, and it gives you a lot of colors. I'm gonna show you the package that the um, iron-on transfers come in. It's in a little tube like this, and the markers sit in there. Let me show you that label. I don't know how clear you can see that. So that's what you're looking at. Can you see that? Perfect. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm going to be able to go and help him color some of his rocks. Or if the picture is not really dark enough, I can just outline it. So I did do one previous because, well, he needs to have two shirts because one he can color with me and one he can color with his mom. So after I finished doing the transfer, I just took one of these black markers and I outlined the picture and I added some things. And it, this is the time that if you want to put um, some names or something on it, you're going to be able to do it this way. And that way, you know, you're going to have them right in the, the right direction. So let's put a nice big B for Boston. And let's do red because I know he loves the color red. So I can just write on top of here. We can do a B for Boston. And that way we can color it afterwards. I have some more hellos. It is wonderful, everyone joining me. Hello, Linda, Irene from New Mexico, Angela from Texas, Marcy, Fanny in Ohio, Kim in Arkansas, and Lori in Washington, Debbie in Australia. Oh my goodness, you're up late. And Brenda in Phoenix. Wow. Australia, you should be in bed sleeping by now. It's late. <laughs> So there we go. That's just an example of what you can do. So you could put anything you want and you can even decorate the back. After you have all of the ink colored in the way you want it, I would definitely heat set it one more time. So just take the iron and again, you don't need steam. Let me make sure it's turned on. Um, you don't need steam. You just need an iron that is going to be iron safe for the product you're using. Because I'm using a t-shirt, I can go pretty high on my iron. And I am just going to just put the iron over top and press it and just let that, that heat of the iron set that ink. So what's happening is that ink sort of works like a stain in you know when you have clothing if you've got a stain it and you've put it in the dryer that stain will never come out because of the heat that's the same idea the 
the pens work for almost every fabric that I've used, but you have to remember your fabric has to be able to have the iron on it. So if you can't put the iron on it, you can't use the markers. But there's a lot of things that we can iron on, so it's, it's pretty safe. Then once I've had that heat set, it's good to go. You're going to be able to wash it, you're gonna be able to dry it, and it stays nice and soft. When you put, um, you get those shirts that have that transfer on it and it's like a piece of plastic afterwards. This is not like this. This is gonna be very, very soft. After the first washing, the um, it won't be hard at all. It'll be very, very soft, just like a t-shirt. So you don't have to worry about it being uncomfortable. And it's just a fun project to make. If you don't want to do it in t-shirts, you could do it in pillowcases. You can buy pre-made canvas bags. You can put them on canvas bags so everybody can have their own name. Does anybody have any idea on what you would transfer and what would you transfer it on? It's kind of interesting to see what you can do. So this was the one that I traced after I transferred it. And there's the one that I did not. So really, it's it, there's not that much of a difference. I just wanted this because I know he's not going to be coloring in the uh, in the lines. So it's good that he's going to be able to see what the picture is after he has scribbled all over it. But he will know he did it and he will remember, which is great. A bonus with this is that paper, which, hold on, I threw it on the ground. There we go. You can use this more than once, so you don't have to trace it a second time. You can get a couple of different transfers from it. The only difference is each transfer is going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. So you might want to do maybe two or three and then retrace it and then do two or three there. And I think we have some more hellos. Let me see who we've got here. We have hello from Martina in Germany, Honeybee in Canada, Anita in South Carolina, Georgiana, Melanie in Langley, and Betty in Oregon. Lots of people. This is so much fun. So I am going to leave this project with you because I think it's a fun project and be sure to leave comments on the video when this is over and it's going to be on law it's going to be on my channel so if you go on my channel you're going to be see be able to see it just like the rest of the videos now the next time we're going to do a project I've decided since I have all of these great markers and I don't like keeping them in containers this way I like to have them in a container where I can draw from them I'm going to make a container to keep pens in pencils makeup brushes could be even quilting supplies and most of this stuff you're going to be able to get at the dollar store and if you dig through your house. So these are these little cake stands you can buy. And this one was for my dollar store. And it was only $4. But to me, this is, well, a little bit too small for cake. So I kind of thought it would be a nice project that I can do on something, do something else with it. So I'm going to use, this is the base. And then I have gone through all of my old jars from candles and stuff like that. And I'm going to be able to put all of these together and make them so that I can put all my pens. I'm going to be able to decorate some of the containers that are already not decorated. You can get little decorative tape. You can get these little peel and stick things. Here's one that's a peel and stick. So anything that you want that is going to stick onto the glass and the metal. Now I do have a glue that you might want to look into and this is what it's called. Can you see that fast tack? Let me move my hands. Now this you can buy at Walmart and some other fabric stores and what's really great about it is it's going to be able to stick the the glass onto the metal and it stays permanent and it dries clear matter of fact i think it starts off clear but it's going to be clear so when this whole project is done as you move it you're not worried about these tipping and falling off so i think it's just going to be a fun project it gives us another chance to get together and talk 
So it's something you're going to be able to go through and see if you can find some odd little jars. I have one little jar. I have no idea what this was from, and I also have no idea why I kept it. But now I'm going to be able to use it. So I do hope you join me next time. I will let you know on my Facebook when it's going to be. They're always going to be Sundays at 2. I just don't know what Sundays from 2. So I'm going to say a couple of more highs. Hi from Mary in Boston. Hi from Marcy in Wisconsin. Pamela in Iowa. And Rhonda in the Maritimes. Ellen in BC. And Sylvia in Puerto Rico. It is so nice of you all from all over the world to join me in my sewing room. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart that you're here to join me. Thank you again for joining me and we will see you next time when I go live. And remember, I still am doing my videos every Tuesday and Thursday at two o'clock. These videos are just a chance for us to chat. Thanks again and have yourselves an awesome day. Bye now.